Hello everyone! Welcome to Crime Lab, the place where you find the truth about crime stories. In this video, we are going to talk about the murder of a 17-year-old girl named Natalie Holloway and the mystery behind it. Stay tuned and please subscribe. On 29th, May 2005, it was a black day for the Holloway family as their young teenage daughter, Natalie, went missing from her graduation trip. It was not just a media sensation across the globe, but the case is still surrounded by extreme mystery as to what really happened to her. This seems to be a proper crime mystery case, isn't it? Are you equally curious and want to know the full truth behind it? Then don't forget to be with us till the end of the video. Let's get to the story. Natalie Holloway was born on 21st October 1986, and she spent her teenage years living in Mountain Brook, an affluent community in Birmingham, Alabama. Her family consisted of her brother, mother, and stepfather, Judd Twitty, an Alabama businessman. Natalie was an honors student who was also a member of the dance team, went to Bible club, and participated in a variety of extracurricular activities. She had received a full scholarship to the University of Alabama and intended to pursue a pre-medical career. The graduation trip to Aruba was the last big celebration before she and her classmates transitioned onto the next point in life. So on May 26, 2005, she along with her classmates boarded a flight to Aruba, the Netherlands for enjoying a five-day trip of unlimited fun and frolic. The first few days of the trip were spent drinking heavily as Natalie and her friends explored Aruba and all it had to offer. They went to the beach, where their large group of classmates ruled the tiki bars on the sand and formed lasting memories. They explored places together, and even some of the bars in the vicinity proved to be their favorite hangout spots. Fast forwarding to the last day of the trip, May 29, 2005. After the roll call from the teachers, Natalie spent the whole day with her friends at the beach making sand castles, eating and dancing. She was reported to be in a very happy mood, and it felt like she was literally having the time of her life as described by her friends. At around 6 p.m., they headed back to their room to get ready for the final dinner. After the dinner was done, they proceeded towards the Holiday Inn Hotel, where they were staying to play casino. A friend of hers was losing a lot of money in a game in the casino, so a young boy named Jorn Vandersloot stepped up to offer her some tips for winning the game and soon they worked and her friend profited from it. Van der Sloot was a 17-year-old Dutch student who was studying at the International School of Aruba. Who knew that by the end, he is going to be the prime suspect in the eyes of the police. Later, after spending time at the casino, Natalie and her friends went to the bus stop as they intended to board a bus to Orange Estad, but were turned away by the driver since they were still carrying drinks in their hands. So they took a taxi to reach their destination. They spent a few hours at Carlos and Charlie's nightclub drinking and dancing to the tunes of music. Later, Vander Sloot arrived at the club with two of his friends Deepak and Sadish Kalpo and met Natalie and her friends. After some time, her friends started to leave for home, but Natalie wasn't with them, so they thought that she might have gone to another nightclub with Sloot and his friends. When they checked at the other nightclub nearby, she wasn't there. One of her friends waited at the hotel lobby in the hopes that she might return late, but there was no sign of her. In the morning, everyone frantically searched for Natalie, but she was nowhere to be found. Few people from the nightclub had said that they had seen her leaving with three boys in a taxi from the nightclub. As it was the day of departure, everyone left except one of the professors who stayed back in the hope that she might return to the hotel. Her parents were also informed of their missing daughter, who then filed a missing report at the police station. As van der Sloot was seen the most with Natalie that night, he had become the prime suspect for this case. Van der Sloot initially denied knowing Natalie, but later admitted that he had dropped her off at her hotel after spending some time with her. He claimed that Natalie wanted to see the sharks, so they drove her to Arashi Beach, which is about a 10-minute drive from the hotel. Van der Sloot said she was approached by a man in a black shirt who looked like a security guard when they returned her to the Holiday Inn. Natalie, on the other hand, did not return to the hotel at night, according to security cameras. The search for Natalie started immediately and many volunteers showed their interest by participating in finding her. Van der Sloot and his two friends, Deepak and Sadish Kalpo, 
were arrested on suspicion of kidnapping and murder after a week of investigation. Morning, there is a potential break in this case. The three young men originally questioned by police have been arrested. They changed their story yet again, claiming they left Natalie sleeping on the beach. Later, Van der Sloot changed his story again, telling police that the brothers dropped him off and then drove Natalie back to her hotel around 2 a.m. On July 4th, Deepak and Sadish Kalpo were released without charge, but Van der Sloot would remain in custody for another two months. Deepak K and Sadish K will be immediately released. The Holloway family offered a $1 million reward for Natalie's safe return, as well as a $250,000 reward for information on her whereabouts. Several witnesses came forward to give their verdict regarding spotting Natalie, but the police didn't find any concrete evidence to justify the verdict. A park ranger discovered a piece of duct tape with blonde hair embedded in it on July 17. The tape was sent to Quantico, Virginia and tested twice, but the results proved it wasn't Natalie's hair. Deepak and Sadish Calvo, as well as Freddie Arambatsis, were arrested again on August 26. This new suspect was spotted photographing underage girls, which the police suspected Van der Sloot and his brothers of doing. Freddie Arambatsis, Deepak and Sadish Calvo, and Jorn van der Sloot were all released without charge a week later. They were, however, released on the condition that they are available to police in the event of an emergency. The laptops taken from the Kalpo brothers and van der Sloot were examined by Dutch police, who discovered conversations between the three. Natalie had not been taken to the beach, according to investigators, and had instead returned to van der Sloot's apartment in the back of his parents' house. On November 21, 2007, the Kalpo brothers and van der Sloot were arrested again, this time for manslaughter and causing serious bodily harm in the death of Natalie Holloway. Despite the opposition of prosecutors, all three were released and not charged by December. Another shocking twist that was coming their way was van der Sloot killed Stephanie Flores Ramirez on 30th May 2010. Stephanie's body was discovered three days later in a hotel room registered to van der Sloot, who was arrested the same day in Chile and extradited back to Peru. Van der Sloot admitted to killing Stephanie because she had accessed his laptop and discovered evidence linking him to Natalie's disappearance. The case has been going on for years, yet the police have been unable to locate any clue. Throughout the years, bones have been discovered on Aruba and tested against Natalie's DNA, but none have ever matched. Judge Alan King signed the declaration on January 2012 after Natalie's father filed a petition to have his daughter declared legally dead. FBI is still seeking evidence from this case in the hope of bringing closure to this long, unending case. Both of Natalie's parents have written books about their experience of their daughter's disappearance. Ludwig, a man, said that he had killed Natalie after she was dropped, but he didn't hurt her. Two years later, Natalie Holloway's mother was contacted by Jorn van der Sloot's attorney, who said van der Sloot would reveal the location of Natalie's body in exchange for $25,000 upfront and another $25,000 once she was found. According to biography, the money was wired to van der Sloot's bank account by Natalie's mother, but he claimed he lied because he needed the money. Authorities were still unsure if they had enough evidence to convict. Now, due to the advancements in genetic DNA, the results can come out clear and concise, rather than previous times, which proves to be beneficial. The state has high hopes from this advancement and are wishing that truth have prevailed soon in front of the world. A few traces of Natalie's blood had been found, but it wasn't sure as to whether she was the person or not as her DNA wasn't matching completely. What are your thoughts on this video? Do let us know in the comment section below. And that's all for today, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next video with another new true crime story. Stay tuned.